whenever I wake up in the morning, I say, thank God. I don't know about many other people, but I always thank God. And when I go back to sleep, I say, thank God. So we have now come to the point where we request upon Bishop and Joko to open this let's talk about it meeting with so many people already registered. My dear brother, if you are on the line, if technology have allowed you to join us, good morning to you, my dear brother. Please, at these very trying times, could you open up a prayer for us to begin this uh, Let's Talk About It community meeting? Our Father in heaven, we thank you because of your goodness and your mercy. You're a merciful God. You're a gracious God. You are the life giver. We thank you for the day you have made it that we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the night that passed with mysteries. And here we are today saying thank you for life. Thank you for another day, another season, and another year. We appreciate you for this precious day, precious time, precious people. Father, I bring you which you know to the attention of the issue that we are dealing with, the pain in our heart, the suffering. We are suffering in the hand of these evil men and women that are raised up their ugly head to subdue your people. Father, I know in your heart, I know what you can do. I bring this meeting today in your precious hand in the name of Jesus and I plead the blood of Jesus Christ on this line upon every heart. First of all, Lord, we lift up the life of our leader, Mazin Namdekan, wherever he is. Father, you are the God that can preserve life. When you called Moses, they chased him into a wilderness, but still you brought him back to save the children of Israel free. Father, he might be in the hand of Pharaoh, but he's not. He's in your hand. No man can do anything that you do not allow. We cover him with the precious blood of Jesus. We cover him. We release the angels of God over him. Heal him what no man can heal. Touch him. Reveal yourself in the greater dimension. And I pray for the entire Biafra land. Father, hear our cry. Blood has been shed concerning this freedom but i know you have a plan and very soon the plan will unfold therefore we're asking you to unfold the plans you have let your mighty hand move let the invisible rock be rolled let the invisible hand of god fight a battle we cannot fight shutting down the despot and our adversaries therefore father i bring this meeting now to your hand whatever we say and deliberate Give us the wisdom you gave to Solomon. We are not quitters. We cannot quit until we win. Father, I know you will help us to go through this. And you will help us to shout one day, say, here comes our victory. Our breakthrough has come. We are waiting for that day of rejoicing, dancing, and jubilation. And I know it's not too far from now. This meeting, bless it, O oh Lord. Bless the speakers. Bless the leaders, these precious women that have been fighting the battle like the women of Zorah in the days of Israel. When the men could not go, they lift up and say, let's go and take our position. Father, give them the blessings, the health, and the mind to fight this to the end. We thank you, Lord, that this meeting will bring tremendous result, and we will bless your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. 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 Now I feel better. After that wonderful prayer by Bishop and Joko, I want to make sure that everyone understands that the American Biafran veterans are Biafrans who served and currently serving in the armed forces of the United States. Our guests are invited for public interest 
their opinion does not represent the views of Avet, but their, their opinions are definitely valid opinions and represents their own views. We welcome you to Avet. Let me start by beginning by uh, quickly before I bring on our special, special, special all guests for this program today. I want to say something about corruption because the issue before us is that our guests have finally broken her silence. And when she has broken the silence, there are enemies within. And the enemies always bring some baggage with them. One of the most critical baggages that the enemies within always brings with them is corruption. Corruption is a perpetual sickness. Corruption is a moral virus that is so potent, it's lethargic. Where corruption thrives, poverty and not prosperity thrives. Corruption is for the greedy, grubby hands of those who get fat on the toil and labor of good people. Corruption benefits only temporarily for those who participate in it. Everyone else is a victim of the theft, the deceit, the dishonesty, and the lies that corruption feeds on. You need to know that corruption is filthy work and despicable act of treachery done behind closed doors. Corruption is a disgusting shame. Corruption steals from you and plunders the wealth of a nation as we all over many years have seen in Nigeria. We have seen corruption compromised on true equity, exploitation, and fairness. We must not allow that to happen in our renewed nation of Biafra. In the nation we are leaving behind, corruption, as we have seen, have reached the level of a culture. It's a way of life for individuals, for companies, governments, and for the nation of Nigeria. Corrupt nations hiding behind Federal Republic of Nigeria, such as Britain, will seek to invest and take over the assets of the nation that they really don't have control of, but they try to take it. We must close our borders and deprive the oppressing invaders from their evil practice by any means necessary. Corruption is nothing less than a form of theft and national robbery, of which we Biafrans will not allow. A corrupt person steals from everyone in society, internally. We all lose when corruption is rampant. Those who participate in corruption have chosen evil over good, lies over truth, and personal gain over well-being of all. To be corrupt means to be rotten to the core. Corruption is, a, is systematic. When it thrives, it destroys the health of the community and nation. This, we pray, will not happen in a new, renewed Biafra nation. 
Thank you so much for listening to that. My dear panelists, guests, friends of Biafra, Umuibo. Let us welcome our special guest, Mrs. Bridget Okafo. Madam Okafo, please introduce yourself and your IBOP women team members. Good morning, good afternoon. How are you, madam? Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone, depending on where you are watching or listening to us. As Dr. Birike rightly said, my name is Mrs. Bridget Okafo and was appointed by our leader, our great leader, Mazin Namdekanu, as the woman leader in USA. And um, I woke up one morning, I found myself wearing so many hats, not by plan, not by choice but probably because I am strongly an advocator. I am severely allergic to injustice, suppression of truth, and deceit. So these three qualities are my nature. And probably that's why I'm wearing so many hats. And I am here with my two ladies, representatives of um, IPOB, the committee women and the sp speakers, Helen Mwafo and Beatrice Ekezie. They are going to explain and uh, introduce themselves more when they are called. All right. Um, we are here because um, Right now, as it stands, every one of us knows that what is going on is not normal. There is abnormal situation at this time. And we, the women that I lead, the Biafran women, we are tired of what is going on, which has been caused by unnecessary backyard, home, archaic politics, ego, power tossing, and this is tearing us apart in the face of important issue. It has made us to lost our priority and we can't take it anymore. And I will explain myself by telling you about, by sharing um, a little bit of um, my experience when I joined IPOB. Back in 2018, when I joined IPOB and one day I was listening to Radio Biafra <clears throat> and the topic that was being presented was um, the OIC agenda. I know for sure that some of us here have listened to that topic. And in that topic, um, the moderator was listing all the plans that the Fulanese have marshaled out, have laid out for us for the past 30 or 40 years ago. All these things that you are see playing out now, they were plans that we are laid out 30 or 40 years ago, unknown to us. As we were busy trying to get all the degrees, acquire all the titles, and do everything we can do in life. They were busy planning on how they will eventually decimate us and then take over our land. 
Yes, we did not know about this. That's fine. We have an excuse for that. However, before they can implement all this, God raised a Moses among us who came up, started informing us, teaching us, letting us know, revealing to us what is going to happen to us. And we listened to all that, thinking that we are assimilating it to use it when the time comes. This time came around, our leader was disappeared in our eyes, in the twinkle of an eye. It was just like a shepherd taking the sheep to the, taking the flock to the desert and all of a sudden disappeared, leaving the flock and they were confused, did not know what happened. That was how I felt when I had this story. I don't know about you. But again, he has already prepared us that a day like this may happen. He has already prepared us for what to do. Remember, at one time back in 2000, I think it was 2020, um, when the Fulani started tripping to our land, that was March of 2020. Everybody was panicking. We did not know that we are going to survive it. And the video came out when our leader was here in America and went to the WIC and told them what happened and told them what is to come. And as we saw, they did not heed to his advice. And in that, that 2020, every one of us blamed the WIC. For us, the women, when we had a meeting with um, Dr. Um, Professor Joffo, we almost fought him in the meeting. We were blaming him so bad. Why didn't they do something about this when our leader came and told them what was going on? But all of us today are guilty of the same offense. Now, our leader is in the dungeon. I wish he can open up the curtain and peep and see the people that he left behind and see what we are doing. How do you think he will feel? Even when our people are being massacred, the Izombe massacre, we were fighting against ourselves. We did not even pay any mind to our people who are being killed. The Awa Mama massacre and burning of all the houses, we were still fighting in the social media. Even when a report came out, about how our leader is being treated, maltreated in the dungeon. We are still fighting in the social media. Nobody wants to do anything but fight against ourselves. And we, the women, we are watching and we are seeing all this. If I can let Biafrans know, before all this fight started, Back in July, we, the women, the committee of IPOB women, we tried all the best we can to stop it before it generated to what it is today. We had secret meetings. We tried all the best we can to stop it, but we couldn't. Here is where we are today. All we are doing is fighting against ourselves. Nobody is thinking of the priority anymore but to fight. Enough is enough. We, the women, we can't take it anymore. We need 
the law, the, 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 what do you call them? The legal team, this is for you. The leaders of IPOB, this is for you. All the dear friends, leave everybody, every single soul to do what they want to do, what they can do so that our leader will be released. He has been there for six months. Whatever you know you are doing, let us see what you are doing. We can't take it anymore. We can't take that bluff. The bluffing time has gone. Flexing of muzzle time is gone. Ego time is gone. We don't need that ego anymore. We need our leader released. And this is for everybody. The legal team, whoever is controlling it and whoever is not controlling the legal team, we all heard how somebody came and has the guts to say, don't let Bruce, in, Bruce Fenn in into that court. <laughs> Come on. Don't let Bruce Fenn in into that court. Who is Bruce Fenn? Dear friends, Bruce Fenn refused to take this contract at first. He bluntly refused. He said no. If it is not for our brother who is close to him, because he has dealt with us already. He has dealt with the evils. He knows who we are. He knows that we will not pay him. And we have failed not to pay him in the, in the past. He knows all those. He knows all that stories about us. And he bluntly refused. He said to us, I know that there are so many functions that are looking for Biafra. I want to know whom you, I want to see your leader and talk to him face to face and ask him, do you really want to hire me for this job? And we said to him, at that time, we said to him, our leader is in the mountain praying. That's what we were told. And eventually, what did we hear? A different story. Because for Brisbane, we started with the Tucano aircraft, if you can remember. Brisbane did not want to do anything with the Ibus. Let me tell you now. He did not want to. If it is not for our brother, who is doing most of the work now? Brisbane did not want to. And all of you had everything that was said about Brisbane. So, um... What I was saying is that I want to let everybody know that initially Bruce Fenn never wanted to take this contract because he knows us. He has worked with the Ibus. He knows that we will not pay. If not for our brother that is close to him, that is very friendly, and he is the one doing most of the work. And all of us have seen his efforts. Bruce Fenn wants to use this as a legacy for his life before he retires. Probably this is the last contract he will have and then he will retire. He wants to make sure. He wants to please his friend. Let me tell you now. He wants to please his friend who introduced him. Not we, because we have already failed him. We are the one who is stopping Bruce Fenn to go and release Onyendu. Can you believe it? We are the one. What do you think Chinese will do? So after we, the women, have observed everything that is going on, we are saying enough of that ego, enough of that muzzle flexing, Enough of that power tussle. Allow anybody who can do anything and we need to see what you are doing. We want our leader to be released. Thank you very much. I want to ask you a question, to Madam Okafo. Okay. Um, what is going on inside IPOB today? Let me ask you a series of questions. What is happening? Where were you when you heard that MNK, our own leader, 
has been kidnapped in Kenya. And why has you chosen now to break your silence on Abvet TV? Okay. Um, your first question, what is going on in IPOB? In my own opinion, from what I have observed, what is going on is, I just mentioned the threatens that I have observed. Maybe I did not say all of them. Number one is backyard, archaic politics. Mm. That, will not, that has been going on and will never help us. Number two is ego. Number three is power tussle. And number four is envy and jealousy. Mm. And this has been going on. This is our nature. And this, it has never helped us and will never help us. So we need to stop. Then what was I doing when our leader was renditioned? I was busy carrying out the tax that, um, and the assignment that um, he gave me. That was why I was lost when I had the message. Because for me, just like I said, it was like leading a sheep out in the wilderness and disappearing. That was how we felt. With the group of people that um, he gave this assignment, some of the women and men, who were working with me when this assignment was given, then all of a sudden we couldn't find him anymore and everything stopped. Mm. And then your third question is, um, what is your third question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did you break your silence? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because after our leader have taught us the doom that we are facing, uh, we, that we are about to face. And we are seeing it right in our eyes. We are seeing it playing out. And we resort to fighting ourselves. It's just like, um, how can I liken it now? It's just like individually we're receiving a letter from maybe an arm robber telling us, listen, in the next six months, we are going to invade your house. Mm. And we may likely kill you and take everything that you have in your house. Gave you six months to get prepared. And probably you, you, you said to yourself, well, if I'm armed robbers are coming, they are not going to give any warning. They will just break in. This is not true. However, comes what a day you are sleeping in their house and they knock, they, they break open and come into your house. And the next thing you did was to fight with your household. Mm. It's exactly what we are doing. Mm. Mm. And it's not acceptable. We can't take it anymore. Thank you so much. Before we bring on um, the ladies, Beatrice Ekezier and Helen Wafo. Uh, I would like to go to Dr. Onyise to please define for us what exactly is enemies within. Please define that, Dr. Onyise, please. If you are here, unmute yourself and define what is the enemies within. Thank you, uh, Chief Ajuchuku. Uh, and I thank uh, everybody that is here, our women and um, our men and ladies and uh, other people. Uh, I really thank uh, um, Mazres um, Oka for, for doing a good job in putting sentence in perspective, especially emphasizing the need to end the uh, infight, whatever we might call it. Enemies within, starting from what she said, I will say I agree with her. The enemies within are very, very close 
extremely close. Your worst enemy is the enemy closest to you. That's your worst enemy. And if I might quote, I think it was Abraham Lincoln also, he said the best way to win your enemy is to make them your friends. But the enemies we have, we cannot make your friends. Mm. Now this was, now Fulani. Britain and uh, began our problem. Then they uh, colluded with the Fulani Caliphate. I repeat, Fulani Caliphate. But today they are not really our true enemies. Our true enemies uh, are those that uh, our people, they are Biafrans. The wars that call themselves politicians, they come in form of governors, present and past, senators, congressmen, they come in form of doctors, teachers. They come in form of young girls who abject poverty has put in a position in attempt to find something to feed on. They go and they take money from the Fulani and let them in. No Fulani in the military, no DSS will venture into Biafra and cross the Niger unless there's somebody in Biafra land, they guaranteed their safety and allowed them to come. You all know that Operation Python Dance was the so-called governors. Our only news rendition, I don't know the whole story. At the end of the day, their hands might be in it. And the worst enemies we have are those people who are inside IPOB. Uh, they're everywhere. They're scattered everywhere. And uh, the modus of operandi is to be pointing fingers to other people away as the enemies. So within us, we have our enemies. The question to ask is, why would somebody like uh, Ms. Sokavo pointed out, Onyendu did a marvelous job that nobody has ever done. In his credit, single-handedly, I have to tell you here bluntly, I don't see how DOS helped him to do what he did or anybody for that matter. He read his books. He put his history together to educate the post, post genocide called Nigerian Civil War, the Biafran genocide. He, he educated them, the post children, post genocide children that didn't know anything would have happened. The history was talked away and removed from the schools. He activated them and told them, you are born in bondage. You are born in bondage of British Fulani Caliphate. He is the one to his personal and only credit. And credit. He told the Yorubas, you are slaves. He told the Middle Belt, you are slaves. Even the <laughs> youth of Ariwa were screaming and saying, <laughs> hey, <laughs> Oyendu, go on. I was called. Thank you. So what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, thank you, says that our enemies within, our so-called politicians, even enemies within are not only those that embezzle the money, not only that they take money from the, from the all the allotments to the local governments, to the state that was given to them, they pocketed all of them and helped to create abject poverty in our place. They mm -hmm. helped to emasculate our people. They should be our target. Thank you. So we have two jobs to do. Bringing onion out, one, and getting these people taken care of. Not the full onions. Caliphate will never come across River Niger unless these people allow them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very well done. Well, very well done. That was a, an extended definition of the enemies within. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we shall bring in uh, Beatrice Ekezie and Helen Mwafo. Ne Mwafo. Um, welcome to both of you. Um, Biko, I'm not sure which one of you that uh, Madam Okafo want to speak first uh, in support of what she has said. Uh, but let me just take a quick stone throw and say, Petri Sekezie, come on in. 
Uh, okay. Thank you. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, uh, our host. Thank you for inviting us here. And I also want to thank uh, our great woman leader for marvelous stuff she's doing. I'm very proud to be working with her. Thank you. Um, so the question is the enemies within. Yes. And for me personally, I think this, uh, the restoration of Biafra, is like a race for eternity. It's between you and your God eventually. So whatever we are doing, we have to also present, are we doing what we're doing based on the disciples, uh, the information we have received from our leader? And there are two enemies, per se, enemies that are unaware, ignorant, and enemies that came with a purpose. Um, you can't really force people to uh, accept that what we're doing is a good thing. Restoration of their is great. But you can only appeal to their conscience. Now, uh, if I were to speak to those um, enemies that are intentional, th those who came in either because of money or, you know, uh, is to let them know uh, you, everybody's going to exit this world. Mm -hmm. And for those people who are multi-billionaires, if you are on, currently on their deathbed, if you were to approach them, it's not money, it's on their mind. It's what have they done to bring, you know, to bring, uh, uh, to make the world a better place, to bring, uh, to uh, what legacy are they leaving? That money will stay here and they, um, they will face eternity, whichever choice they make. So to those people, whether those that are within, those that are intentional within IPOB and those in Biafra land, you know, helping the, uh, uh, the outsiders to oppress us, for them to rethink their actions, you know, money is not end or be all. At your deathbed, you're not going to take that. What you're going to take with you is this, the positive thing you have done for your posterity, for your family, for your children, for your generation, and for your nation. Okay. And for those that are ignorantly uh, um, enemy, enemy with ignorance, that's how I define them. They are doing the act of uh, enemy, but maybe to them, they don't know it. I will ask them to listen to what our leader has taught us. He said, anywhere we see injustice, things that are not right, we must fight to address it and to bring correction to it. That's what makes us a Biafra. And that's the people here trying to, as a Biafra, present to the world. A Biafra is not the image we have right now. If you're a quote unquote a Nigerian, you're untrustworthy, you can't be trusted. You know, our leader wants us to get away from them. It doesn't matter whether they are your friends, they are next of kin, they're your brother, they're your sister, anywhere injustice, e e wrong exists, we must shine light on it and bring, uh, you know, as true Biafra we are or desire to be. Thank you. I hope I don't exit my time. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'll hand over to Sister Helen. All right, thank you very much, Sister Beatrice. And uh, I would like to take this chance really to uh, bring New Year's greetings to all our people, friends of Biafra, and lovers of liberty all over the world. I'm you know, visiting you this afternoon uh, from the east coast of the United States, where it's quite cold. Um, I'd like to thank Madam Bridget again, really. Um, for really lack of a better word, I'll, I'll say that I'll use the word long suffering because anyone that has served our people, the Igbos, uh, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a group of hard knocks. We are. So I thank you. And um, I'll also like to use this chance to salute our gracious host, um, who is a veteran and all the veterans in the house, the Afran veterans who stood ready to give their last full measure of our liberty and in defense of our homeland, our lives, our women, our children, I'd like to thank you. We cannot thank you enough. And of course, um, we're doing this on the back uh, drop of uh, the Martin Luther King uh, weekend, which is the dignity to the human person. So um, thank you so much to all the panelists, the brother that has spoken before. Um, I would also like to take a chance to to really thank people in Biafra land who are not IPOB members, but they are speaking. They are speaking up when it is not opportune, when it is not convenient, when it's actually not necessarily safe, like Sinete Nyaba, Nyaba Ribe, 
uh, our first um, uh, first Republic Aviation Minister, uh, Naimazi, what's his name, Basuli Kamechi. You know, there are so many of them. Father Mbaka, who is speaking up now, uh, Father Bubemonso, who is speaking up now. Those are really bold steps. Even Mrs. Bianco Juku, you know, people are talking. So thank you. Um, I would like to build a little bit on, on the definition that our brother put forth. Who is an enemy? Who is an enemy? So a simple dictionary definition of that is a person who actively who is actively opposed to someone or something. And if you pay attention to that definition, it does not exclude the self. It does not exclude the self. It does not exclude the person who is identifying who the enemy is. So the enemy could inadvertently, uh, inadvertently be the person identifying who their enemy is. Mm. So having said that, let's discuss the enemy within. And please forgive me if you're non Igbo speaking. I always revert to the language of my comfort, which is Igbo, Igbo language, and anybody can feel free to maybe interpret. So there is something Igbo say, Alarema, who is it? Umunna. Alarema Umunna. It's telling you, identifying your enemy or who, who is causing disruption. Who is the enemy of progress? You don't have to go too far. Look at the meeting. Look at the members of that community. That is who is taking you back. That is who is hindering pr progress. So mm. that to correct it then, where do you start? Self-examination, self-criticism, which is one of the hardest things you can ask a human being to do to actually acknowledge, well, you know, I thought I was great. Maybe I was a piece of SH-80. I'm not as good as I thought I was. That is a hard thing to do, self-examination. As long as you're in a, in a relationship, whatever that may be, that will be the first place to start because that commotion, that confusion, that disharmony will not take place if you weren't in it. And that goes to every member of that given community. So that is, you know, that is a word for thought. And uh, our brother too have identified people, you know, I would say prominent organizations and groups who are supposed to be custodians of knowledge and truth for us, you know, be it Tohaneze, uh, be it, you know, the governors, these are people who are supposed to be custodians and representing representing the people. So, yes, there was something that I watched recently that really moved me. And that was um, uh, one of the, of the uh, generals, you know, during the, the civil war. Um, he, had an, he had an interview. Uh, that was uh, General O'Connor Madiebo. Yes, Alexander Madiebo. He's a very old man now. He did an interesting interview. What he said, was about our people who are supposedly representing us right now, but purely of self-interest. They are of self-interest in reaching themselves, going from one party to the other to maximize the benefit they have. They don't have the interest of the people at heart. And what that does is what? It has emboldened the outside enemy. It has emboldened that Fulani from Mali or Niger to come into our land, invade Biafra land with impunity, kill our women and children and walk scotch free. Mm. Walk scotch free. Guess what? A Fulani from Mali has more rights in our homeland today than you and I. A governor opened his mouth to say that the life of Biafra. A Biafran is what, what? 500,000 Naira. If a Fulani kills you, they pay us 500,000 Naira. But if you kill their cow, you're going in. Whatever happens to you in, in their custody of people who cannot be held accountable, that is actually your problem. 
That is what a governor told our people. That is our what. Do you then need to even begin to mention who our enemies are? How about the person that was number four all of a sudden? Nigerian Abracadabra, now he's number one. Those are our problems, yes. And these are, you know, these are Nai uh, Alexander Made, but what he says, though I don't, I didn't agree with him completely again uh, in everything he's saying. He says, every Igbo man, any Igbo man seeking presidency, he said that person is an, not an Igbo man. That's what he said, an old man. Because that person understands that he is a puppet who will be removed if he doesn't toe the line. You see, he is not going there to represent the interest of the people. And then they bring, they try to sell to our folks this issue of restructuring. And I've always asked the question, restructuring what? Mm. When you restructure, nobody has asked, who is going to be in charge of the military? Is it the same people that are in charge of it now or they're just going to hand it over to you? Because it being in charge of the military is the, is the job of a nation, not the individual states, right? You are still under the Fulani gun. Who is going to be in charge of the immigration? As they close your southern borders, all the Fulanis of West Africa, they are still free to troop in into your land. Mm. And guess what? As long as you're a federating unit, right, in that restructured so-called country, as long as you're a federating unit, you can't tell that Fulani not to come to your land because you're not just going to close a border. Yes, you are restructured, your economy is restructured, but they can come. They still have the gun, they still have the immigration. What does that bring to mind? An Igbo adage that says, mm -hmm. You still have the same problem. A man who sold his dog just to buy a monkey, you still have an animal squatting around your house. Same problem, different name. Same problem. So that restructuring is a scam, no matter how they try to package it. So that is one point I'd like to make. Then it comes to what, if, you know, I don't want to take so much time, but there's so much to discuss. Members of the organization have already, you know, touched a bit about that. And when Madam Bridget, you know, really called me to discuss this, one song came to mind. You know, and we know that song when when we were you know young at home. You see day laborers when they're you know walking, they sing and walk to the cadence of this song. Even when we were in, you know maybe school, you're doing manual level. What it says is what. Think about that song for one mm -hmm. minute. <laughs> Think about it. You know what it says. Keep your nose away from where it don't belong. Walk. If you are not doing walk and calling somebody name, finding fault, you are not doing what you're supposed to do. It's as simple as that. If you are busy, you don't have your cutlass, you don't have whatever your, your, weapon, your tool of work is, but you are busy finding fault. You are not doing what you're supposed to do. Keep your nose where it belongs. Do your job, do your mandate, do what Onyendu has asked you to do. Leave other people alone. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. That is a very simple song. I just love our language because it has this beautiful way of using euphemism to throw some verbal bombs at, at people who don't behave themselves. It's telling you to do your job. Leave, leave people. Don't attack. Oh, no, this brother. Oh, the quite oh, it's saboteur. Never minding your you. So, soon as you're minding other people's business, you're not doing what you've been mandated to do. Mm -hmm. That is again calls for self-examination. Everyone included. 
And I would really like to close by, you know, quoting a scripture. I, I don't like to hit people over the hell with, with my faith, but I know we are, you know, uh, hyper-religious people. It's, you know, this really goes to maybe indifferent people, people that are just indifferent. One way or the other, it doesn't concern them. I'm just minding my own business. Guess what? Do you know what kills six million Jews? Indifferent people. Wasn't the bad guys, really. It was people that are just indifferent. You are indifferent to the suffering of your folks. Debos, you're minding your business, trying to survive for one day. Guess what? I would like you to ponder this. And it is really from the book of James, chapter 4, verse 13. It says, he who knows what to do, but do it not, to you, it is sin. Or make it. Give money here, question me. Give someone the matchum problem. I don't want. You fail to do it. You fail to speak that truth when it is unsafe. At the right time that you are supposed to be speaking and you are silent, it is what you are supposed to do. But you didn't do it. To you, it is sin. God bless us. Thank you very much. Hello, ma, for Dalu Mane. Dalu no email off for my kudo for my um wonderful. Uh, before we go further, uh, there is some Umada Biafra worldwide, also now known as Umada Highway. Ndidi Amaka, I'm a man on Uno. Biko Biaku Uno and Yoku. After you, uh, we have to go to Dr. Daniel Azubike because I'm, I'm this, my, this my brother is, um, is a very powerful man. So under the Amaka, a bit in the because we have cool and yoku. Unmute yourself, please. Okay. Good afternoon, good morning, good night, uh, great dear friends. My Ebo leader, Mrs. Uh, Bridget Okafo. My, I address her as the gentle giant. I mm. welcome you, ma. And to my beloved sisters, you're welcome to this uh, hello, pl hello platform where we say it the way it is. Truth is so crystal and it's so clear. So I welcome um, Ma Zimbabwe, the only, the man that um, stands with the women and Put them, you know, in the right shape when they want to derail. You're welcome, sir. And uh, I thank uh, Chief BDK and the men behind the cameras. Um, I am here today as a Wada Biafra worldwide. I'm a Biafra woman as well, but in, here today, I am here as Wada Biafra. You see, um. The Igbo says that ako ya kono gu ako ya kono gu ama mekro gu ko ako. You see, things happen, and if we don't say it the way it is, asarura la ba for ya womenan. If we don't say it the way it is, we will be doing one step forward, two step backwards, and that is stagnancy. We'll be stagnant. Madam Bridget mentioned few things here that were so striking to me that is creeping into the five bricks of this uh, struggle. And if we don't remove this arcane from the soup, if we don't do this, you find out that this journey might take us a little longer. She identified those four points, and I completely agree with her. Selfishness. Egocentrism, pride, empty pride, and then idiosyncrasy, because I call it idiosyncrasy because he, who, my father says, he who knows not, and knows not that he knows not, and think that he knows why he knows not, he's a fool. He's a fool. <laughs> yes. So if we think we are doing the right thing, and we don't say the way it is, then we will be here marking time. 
the legal team of Mazin Namdi Kalu, Madam Bridget is said here, we want to know what you guys are doing. We want to know, Umada want to know what you guys are doing. It's unfortunate that uh, the demons among us, it's unfortunate also that the enemies in the house are creeping into Umada, but Umada will clean them up and come back again. And when we come back, our mission, we must accomplish. When you talk of enemy, enemy in the house, they're not far away. They're within you. That you know, they are in your, in your the clothes you're wearing. The worst thing you can do in life you eat so awabali my boy hiwerishi. That is the worst thing you can do in life. Because an enemy in the house can be your child, it can be your friend, it can be your partner, it can be your husband, it can be your Professional colleague, it can be Omada, it can be Omada, it can be different women. They are evil everywhere, uh, uh, with no apologies. If you know you are the Kokoro in the house, get off from this struggle because you are derailing us. Hmm. Whenever we want to make two steps forward, they bring the same recycle being, they take out three steps backwards. And you people don't think something is wrong, you're an, an enemy in the house. When you don't speak the truth, don't you think you're an enemy in the house? When you go about blackmailing people for your selfish interest, don't you think you're an enemy in the house? When you give people necessary acts that overwhelm them and consume them, that has no benefit to our struggle, don't you think you're an enemy in the house? When you bring unnecessary projects that will not move us forward, don't you think you're an enemy in the house? Their friend, Umada, Biafra women, check yourselves. Who are these enemies in the house? There are many. They are in high places, occupying high positions. Some of them are psychotic. Some of them need to be on medication. Some of them need to give away from this struggle and go and, and, and be farming and be raising fowls. Some of them have at least their importance and usefulness. They need to step aside. Let me be honest with you. This struggle, we are the one holding Mazin and the color in the dungeon. Because if their friends collectively come together and say enough is enough, who is Fulani? Doesn't matter. Who is Bria? It doesn't matter. They can't stand up. They know we are resilient people. We are strong. We are intelligent. We are, we, we don't, we don't take no for an answer. But we have bad enemies in the house that keep derailing us. We have people who have their ulterior motives, who just want to enrich themselves using the struggle. My question to Biafra is this. My question to Biafra is that, do you really want Biafra? Do you really want Biafra? If you really do, you people need to talk to some people that are derailing us. Let them get out of the way. You people need to talk to AG, AG4, AG4. MK said, lawyer, to tell Umada what he's doing, because we're going to bring him to Umada, because if a Jimofo is not doing what he's supposed to do, and he's hiding under his ego, under his uh, selfishness, under his, uh, 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 I do not, nobody has monotony of knowledge. When you, if, when you bring people of diverse uh, uh, knowledge in, in something you move forward. We don't want to tell stories. The matter we already not seen this thing before the evils among us, the most among us came with their distractions, which we're gonna get to the root of it and clear and move on. So that energy they spend blackmailing people, sabotaging the effort. Please let them use it to preach the right thing that will move us forward. We are being derailed. And it's nothing but because of empty pride, empty egocentric behavior. And then I don't know what, what I would say, people who are not actually freedom fighters. Why do we have to say Bruce Fenn will not say, see, why do they have to say Bruce Fenn will not see Mazi? That man has been there how many times? Five times. Under the 
under the guidership and the sponsorship of uh, uh, Biafra women led by Madam Bridget Okafo. That money we take it to Biafra, we can use it to impart our people. People say he will not say, and they know when he sees Mazin Nandikalo, there'll be a difference. So who are these enemies in the house? These people that, that the enemies on social media ranting and lying, the gossiping women of Atlanta and the gossiping women of LA, why can't they put their effort in finding out why Bruce Frank could not see Mazin Nandikalo? Why can't they put their effort and see why things are happening the way it's happening? Do we really need this Biafra? I want everybody to go home today and ask himself, do you actually want this Biafra? If you do, you need to do some extraordinary things. We are in a precarious state and the extraordinary time requires extraordinary actions and things. So Biafra women, I join you, I'm a Biafra woman, I'm a mother. Madam Bridget, you know, any day, any time, I am among your people, but like I said to them here as Umada, we were invited as Umada, as Umada Biafra. We will join hands with you. We did it in 1929, about we men. Now, um, what can you, we do respect our men, now some, some women have followed them, Miss Bridget, we will join hands with you and do the needful. The kingdom of God has suffered violence and only the children of God will take it by force. I rest my case. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nidia Maka, that was absolutely strong and powerful. I like the proposal that you have submitted to uh, our, my, our special guest, Bridget, that Umada will join hands. That's exactly some of what we need. We need joining. As one former slave in America once said, a hand that is spread is not united, but a hand that comes together yields greater power. I want to give everybody an opportunity to so it, we just saw, we changed things a little bit as we go, because I want to hear from the Donald Azubike and then Uche Mbakwe. These two gentlemen, right after they have finished saying, they expressed their views, then we will go to uh, open the floor to everybody. So those people... We want to get many people, more people this time. So, you know, but actually, if you could raise your hand or, you know, however that thing is done, um, just uh, get ready because we're calling in anybody. We just unmute yourself and we want the floor to be open. My dear brother, ah, my goodness, Donald Azubike. Donald Azubike, back here, no. <laughs> I'm right there, here, sir. My dear right brother. Here. There will. There was a. Okay. My dear brother. I greet you all, my fellow beer friends. Uh, uh, my name is Dr. Donald Azubike. Uh, I live in Maryland and I have come in contact with some of us here in the panel. So we're talking about enemies within. I will be, I will be concise. I'll be pointed. I'll be targeted. Uh, enemies in the house are those who place themselves as middlemen or women between beer friends and the leadership, mm -hmm. which is uh, which involves Onyendu. As a matter of fact, these middlemen women are the people that put him in the condition we are facing today. And I'm going to be direct. I'm not missing words. I am a bold beer friend. Starting from the time of Obidi, Obienu, he brought in segregation in IPOB USA. He excluded majority and involved minority. He moved, he, he, after him, Obi Okoro continued from where he stopped. Okay. And the same policy, the same pattern, the same method, 
alienating majority, including minority. And then coming to Maryland, they have their ball, their, their man, their, 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 their psychophant who carried their, who beat their deeds. I will not mention that name right now, but I know who that person is. And then you people can figure who that person is. This man has always worked with the wrong people, with Obidio Bienu, with Okoro, from Okoro to Madame Oyibo, and from Madame Oyibo internally to uh, to Chimampa, and from there went to uh, Oliver Obi. Look, the, can you all, do you all know the names that I've read out so far? These are wrong people. And I thank God my brother and friend, Kanu Takanu, is a, is a living witness, and he knows he's on this broadcast today. I He can testify that I have mentioned the names of these people that are inimical to the progress and the forward movement of IPOB USA. So this, these are the this is the problem. This is these are the enemies within. Those who have formed cabals, those who have formed cliques to pretend to have that or that connection, to pretend to have that whole that whole information that is private to them but not to the others. Anything they tell Onyendu, if you say A, they go and tell Onyendu, you say D, and Onyendu acts upon it. You see, I, I don't have, I only have less than four minutes to, to, to see, highlight everything. But in nutshell, if middlemen and women and cabals and cliques don't die in IPOB worldwide, then we are going to be in a doldrum for a long time. You see, this is my take. Anything within, are those who have formed cliques, have formed cabals, middlemen, middlewomen, who have who have arrogated to themselves to to power and authority to liaise to, to bring words to Hindu. We don't have Moses again. We have access to God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Every Moses in IPOB should die. Henceforth, thank you. That's all I have for now. Thank you so much, Dr. Zubike. One of the things that you can do for me, we heard from Karun Takano this morning, and we wanted him to please call in, come in. We want to talk to him. Uh, Uche, Uche Mbakwe, and Amy, you are next. We see your hands up. Uche Mbakwe, please come in and say something to us. Unmute yourself. <laughs> so thank go ahead, my much, brother. Uh, Welcome, you so much, God bless you. you. I, uh, I doff my heart for you. I <laughs> love listening to you. I mean, the, uh, your language, the way you present it, uh, you know, it's really, uh, it draws me closer to you. So you thank are my friend. So thank you. Um, yes, um, my name is Uche Mbakwe. I live in Iowa, state of Iowa, here in the U.S. Um, of course, uh, I'm a Biafran veteran, and um, I, my background is engineering. So um, I've worked with the women, of course, um, they can testify to that. Um, we've had lots of uh, definition for enemy in the house. Very beautiful uh, definitions from every one of you. You're all very correct. Um, there's one area, one aspect of uh, enemy in the house that oftentimes we tend to forget. Uh, these are enemies that um, um, they come in as your friend, as one of you. They start very well. Um, all of a sudden, they begin to change like chameleon. Hmm. And then um, by the time you know it, they... Um, they would take a little speck of truth and then blend it with a um, pack with lies mm. and then cook it and start feeding everybody with it. Mm. And to the gullible, they see that speck of truth. They say, oh yeah, that's it. Everything is um, true. This is, this is more like a self-destruct. So it's not going to get us anywhere. And the earlier we identify such people among us, they are among us. Um, the better 
they are um, less likely will derail. So, I, you know, I don't like pointing fingers, but uh, this time around, I have to make mention of one name, and we've got to slow her down. And that said, uh, Dr. Nelly, you will expect somebody as high as a doctor. Because doctor, I mean, before, before you answer a doctor, you have your PhD. And PhD is not just a name. It's a position in, the, in your field. That means you are an authority. That means you're able to look at things critically, analyze things before you present it. And wherever you put your signature is authentic, it's, it's fine. So um, Dr. Nelly does not uh, represent that, um, um, that group, that class of uh, intellectuals. And it's cost, causing a lot of damage today. Um, Majan Bija said earlier, he alluded to something that whoever knows what he or she can do to bring about the effort, to bring onion do out, do it. Don't kick on other people that are trying to do something. And that's exactly what Nelly has recently done. And most people are clapping for her. We are really, really in trouble. That is my um, submission. Thank you. God bless you, my brother. To the point, short, straightforward. Amy, unmute yourself. All right. After Amy, we're going to open this floor. So, Bikonu, I want everybody who would like to ask Madam Bridget, a question to please prepare your question in the form of a question, not in the form of a statement, but maybe if you're going to make a statement, a brief one, so that she will have the opportunity to answer your question. Thank you so much, Amy. Good morning to you. Chief OBDK is with you. I just want to thank you, uh, Chief OBDK, yeah, and also for calling me up to come and give a little of my opinion concerning what is going on in uh, IPOB family and then the topic uh, enemy in the house. Yes. I just also want to thank uh, our woman, women leader, uh, Mrs. Bridget Okafo. I, I will say that this woman, you are one out of millions. I think you have really inspired me so much in this uh, struggle that even during these ch challenging times that we're going through in this struggle, you have so much inspired me. This is a woman that is of few words, but she's focused. She knows what she wants. And then she doesn't make noise. She's not a ranter. She's there, she's you not know, very calculative. And then she takes the right step at the right time. And then I would, that, this would take me to a scripture that says that a, a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish one plucks it down or pulls it down with her own hands. So if you are the, that, this kind of woman that you use, use your own hand to pluck down your house, you are foolish. Mm. But if you're that woman that you will gather your house together, you put your house together. You want things to go well. You are not talking. You are not a talkative. You are not ranting here and there. You are not wanting to be seen. You are not wanting to be heard. You are a wise woman. Mm. What am I trying to say? A lot of things have, you know, gone wrong in this struggle, and then we keep talking as just like somebody said here that you will make um, two steps ahead or forward. Somebody will come up with something that will take us backward, 10 steps backward. And that's what's going on here now. I remember when this thing started. There was a time in the, in the women's meeting. I called a, a, woman, a woman leader. Please, can we talk to Dr. Nelly to stop going out there in the social media? 
there are people that can't you know talk so much that no don't know how to you know make up their uh, their, their their speech they just go there they will talk so loud that they will just you know small things i i mentioned it in one of our meetings but somehow i didn't know I, and then also i also remember i called our panelists some of them also i could talk to the people that are in the umwada group i said please you could go out there to talk no matter what it is, you are being called Omada. Anybody outside uh, that is not that is not in this uh, women in the women forum outside there takes Omada. All of us the same. We are all Omada. Please, you people should you know stop taking uh, Doctor Nelly to the social media. She's causing a lot of harm than uh, good in that place. It's as if that thing was not taking note of. But now today, see where we are. Look at where we are today. It's as if a lot of things have gone haywire. And look at where our leader is. And then their kissing fingers are being pointed on us all. We all IPOB members, we be our friends. That like we are the ones that are keeping our leader in the dungeon of the enemy. And then we are here today. We are looking for a way forward. And that way, way forward, I will suggest here is this. Umada, we have spoken. Yes, we have. I remember last week, some mothers in in this in Avid made a proclamation that um, certain people should take off their hands in this fight to bring out our leader. Cannot leave us alone. DOS leave us alone. And then our legal team, please do follow what the people that want our leader to come out of that dungeon once. And this, um, this is my submission in this today. These people indirectly have mentioned the enemies in the house. We know the enemies in the house. These people that, there are a lot of people that they don't know. We know when they bury their corpse, you will just, when they tell you to go and they look away of uh, exhuming that corpse, you go to start from the leg. That is what it is. Some people don't know the beginning of the story. And then my father, there's one thing I learned from my father. My father is, an, is an, uh, an, an, a British Army officer. And I tell you, I learned a lot of things from him. Before you speak, list him very well. And before my, uh, you see me coming out to talk, I must have listened very well, I must have some good opinion. And then when you see me coming out to talk, I'm coming to talk to, to give a warning. So what am I trying to say? These things are happening in, in IPOB today. Please, we, the Umada, a lot of us are the problems. Those that are talking from the floor, those that will come out. And Jidamaka is the problem. Uh, Martin Manager is the problem. If Umar is the problem, this and that, they will not want to listen well to hear what is going on. Some people shall by come, will come into our midst like enemies in sheep clothes. Initially, they will bring out, they will say things that will make us, you know, to thrill us. But somewhere along then, they have their plan. They, 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 they have already mapped out their agenda. When they win people on their side, you see them, they will start playing out their, their, their cards to us. What am I trying to say? This, at this point we are, let's be focused. Let's be focused. Just like Sister Beatrice said, that this we are in a this is like a heavenly race we are running in this Biafra struggle. That we should look in west. What am I doing? What I'm doing is it the right thing? Am I really doing what I, we learned from our leader, Mazen Nanda Kano? Most of us that have sat under the teaching of our leader, Mazen Nanda Kano, if we are honest to ourselves, if we've been paying attention to all his teaching, I don't think we would have been where we are today here. But because of the fact that we are being we are being uh, distracted. People are you know, dragging us. And then from what I've looked in, what I've seen that most of these people that are doing all these things, they have not sat under the leader of our leader, under our, the teachings of our leader. Many of them are some of these, some, some people that came newly, who never sat under his teaching, who never listened to pay attention to what he was, that they came because they wanted to, they want to belong. Some of them are the people that are causing these problems. Let's cut off this, uh, this uh, AK one. Otherwise, it's already turning into the hand of a Akamadu in our midst. 
Thank you. Amy, thank you very much. That's why we call this show, Let's Talk About It. Because and we do not talk about it. That is, if we have a problem, if we have a view, and if there's some disparity in our view, others should come out and say something. If you see it, say something. If you see something wrong, say something. Because we can never come to one strong Biafrans unless we correct each other, say something. If Dr. Nelly is listening, we need her to show, to come, talk to us, no matter what, come to AppVet, the American Biafran Veteran Radio TV, and we will give you the platform. We will give you the seat to talk, respond to those questions and to those comments that have been levied at you. In fact, anyone that feels that they are being unfairly mentioned, talked about on Abbott TV, radio, contact our producer, and let him go ahead. And it seemed like there's, uh oh, oh, Julie, I didn't know you were here. Unmute yourself. I have to hear from you. I am on mute. Can you hear me? Ah, Julie. No, okay, do. Okay, do. <laughs> How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. So I kind of have two questions, comments. So the first one is, sort of question and comment, is like, is IPOB going to divide into a couple of factions or more? And if yes, how do we push forward regardless? Because I personally think that Biafra can be restored regardless of any divisions within IPOB. Divisions and sabotage are sadly to be expected after years of oppression and suppression in Nigeria. So we go back to, for instance, World War II. We know that the Polish people were despondent and that led them basically to collaborate with the Nazis, which was you know, a complete disaster. So there are two um, schools of thought about what happened in Poland. But my view is that we have to work and understand that that threat is always going to be there. There's a lot of poverty and a lot of oppression, a lot of suppression. That's been our history in Nigeria. So we have to bear that in mind as we move forward, that there are always going to be saboteurs, you know, people who are going to do the wrong thing. They'll be influenced by um, maybe history, the weight of history, or we've been fighting for this for so many years, I don't think we're going to get it. If a Nigerian person um, gives me a bit of money, maybe I'll just cash in and then, you know, get on with my life. Maybe this, we have to understand that's what we're working with. Um, and basically find a way to push forward, knowing that that threat is always there. It's a bit like how we say that this is the new normal. We're always going to have COVID so, or, or, or a pandemic. So we have to learn to live our lives and push forward regardless. So that's my, um, that's my first point. And then my second point is every day in the news and on social media, there's news about somebody saying this and this person has been expelled from IPOB and this person's fallen foul and this person's done something wrong. The, my, the question I ask myself is due process being followed? Because if due process is being followed, that's all we need to worry about. If people are being expelled from IPOB because things are just made up about them and they're kicked out, then we have a problem. If we have something that's really rigorous, so we have a panel that looks at things very carefully. If people have been accused of things, they have a chance to defend themselves and we go through that process, we'll be fine. And we can push forward as we are. Does that make sense? That, those are my points. Of course, it makes sense. Thank you so much. That makes very good sense. Common sense. So anybody that has a question, uh, Chidima, if you have a question, anybody who has a question, you know, a brief statement is acceptable, but anybody who has a question for Bridget, we ask you to please ask it now. Unmute yourself. 
and then ask the question that you would like to ask. Go ahead. Oh. Yes. Thank you. Um, Didi Amaka, thank you. Yes, this is Didi Amaka. Onyishu Mwai, my question goes to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a simple question. And um, it's just to clear my concerns about the legal team. Uh, have you ever called... Um, I'm a little bit concerned because of what Carlos Takalo said the other time that he is over the legal team. And I am again a little bit concerned about, you know, some uh, cover-ups here and there when Simon Ekpa made some expose, you know, about some lawyers that are supposed to join our, our legal team. On you should mind, um, does Carlos Takalo have influence over if I need a geo four, and how are, how is it that the these two gentlemen uh, action is impacting the people that can make a big difference or more difference in this hearing? Biafra Umada asking you on issue why I know. Have you ever called if I need a geo four with your women leadership? to ask him the journey so far. Do we need to integrate more hands? Do we need to infiltrate it? Do we need to put more money to make this difference? Where do we stand here as Biafran women leaders? Thank you so much, Yamaka. Uh, Madam Bridget, would you like to answer one question at a time, or would you like to have more questions asked and then answer them as you go? Okay, maybe let everybody ask their question. I'll, I'll be writing it down and then I can answer it at one time. Does the uh, canon have any any uh, influence or power over the legal team? Uh, basically, that's a question. Who has the second question? Stella, are you there? Kidema, are you there? Who else? Anybody? Unmute yourself. And that's a question. I mean, Something has been recorded. <laughs> it? Uh, okay. Doc, Dr. Felix, you, you have a question. Yes. Oh, um, okay. Oh, okay. One second, Dr. Felix. You tune back quick. Back. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, am I unmuted? Yes, you're unmuted. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, Madam Bridget, um, what is the position of the women group as a whole? Um, in regards to the sit at home and all the various uh, sanctions that uh, economic sanctions that are being um, articulated or being um, put in place. Uh, secondly, um, our onion do goes to court in the next couple of days um, or whatever. And um, it's obvious that uh, the case is going to be adjoined. Um, is there anything planned by the women as a whole to reciprocate, to, you know, like in form of um, agitation? Thank you, sir. In the form of agitation. Thank you. Um, Sorry, I've unmuted myself. The, the, both of my comments were questions. So, I suppose my first question would be, um, can okay, you, you, sorry. Go ahead, can, go ahead, my dear, go ahead. Yeah, can, can um, Madam Bridget organize um, things so that basically the organization is saboteur proof? So that would be the first question. And then the second, um, basically, so if somebody does something to bring um, um, Biafra back, the, the system is set up so we just keep moving forward regardless. Then the second question would be, is there due process? So um, we don't keep hearing about all these people that have been kicked out of IPOB and awful things have happened to them. So there's a due process. So if somebody's done something wrong, there is a process to basically um, look at that and make sure that the, that the person and IPOB um, are being treated fairly. Does that make sense? So those are my two questions. I suppose I explained the questions instead of just putting 
them as questions, but I thought if I explained, it would make more sense. Thank you. That makes sense, Julie. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Felix, go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, thank you so much. My question is rooted in what the last speaker, Julie, said earlier. Thank you, Julie. And that is, um, if I may borrow words, um, Gandhi, another known non-violent freedom fighter, said when he was trying to get India independence from Britain, just two lines. He says, strength of numbers is the delight of the timid. The valiant in spirit, glory in fighting alone. Now, a question is, how do we make this moving forward no matter what? Because she has enumerated that new Second World War, she's a reader, to tell you that this has happened, it's going to happen, you can't stop it. So my thing is, our woman leader, Solutions, what solutions do we have to continue to move forward as it is, to get Onyendu out, to go for Biafra restoration, regardless of what all the names mentioned there, whom they are. Yes, you can be a fireproof, but you don't go point in hand and here and there. It was uh, about Einstein, another important brain that walked the face of this earth that says, in his quotes, that intelligent people do ignore distance, and that's what I do. The people here, I hang around with my after grown, the Bible to Felix and my friends. I hang around with Azanoka, Azu Anoka. As long as my conscience is clear, those of you knew him. My name was mentioned on TV. Did any already? Did anybody hear me say anything? Foul. More than a thousand people, I repeat, a thousand called me because I do medical mission back home for over 30 years. They know me. Yes, same children, their parents. What's going on? Who is mentioning? I said, did you hear me say anything? No, I just kept going forward. So what are you going to do to follow what this young lady is saying, which is extremely important? That's how America came to be, all these nations. How do we continue to move forward and forget these people they mentioned them? And lastly, let me provide a little bit solution to that. We do already where we are. Can we just make sure that anybody you all are getting in a position is vetted? We have Biafra accountability and transparency, and that's the government I foresee for Biafra. Meritocracy. You're not going to bring anybody that you've been in America. U.S. is not a degree. I mean, I'm U.S. You don't get people factory worker that don't know their left and right looking for a way to get money. You make them because it's a woman leader, because it's my brother, it's my sister, it's my classmates, it's my... Please, what are you going to do within your ranks? Because we're doing within our own ranks. This young lady has brought something here that a solution. We're talking about solution now to enemies in the house. And this is it. Ignore them, move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Donald Martin, my dear brother, Biko, we don't meet you. <clears throat> took 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 so long to get to you. Unmute yourself. Okay, sir. You can lower okay. your hand and all of that. Uh. <laughs> okay. I think it's low now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my question goes to uh, Madam Bridget. Mm -hmm. Madam Bridget, I heard you over the radio speak on uh, Madam uh, Nelly, Doctor Nelly, where you praised her to high heavens and even took excuse for her saying that she's uh, she's an auditor. She be, there's a particular way she behaves and that uh, nobody can take that away from her. I'm paraphrasing now. My question to you now is, what efforts have you made to checkmate her on canny and unruly and uh, uncontrolled media Blitz across the uh, across media blitz. What efforts have you made? Have you been able to identify something wrong with her and checkmated that? Have have you liaised with her? What have you done? Thank you. Thank you so much, Donald. Um, Ma Madam Bridget, you have five questions already. Um, but we, if it's all right, 
we would like to add one more. One more. Um, Christopher, please uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. Okay. Good evening, sir. Good, Good evening, evening everybody in the house. How are you? I'm fine. I'm calling from this side of Africa, DRC. You're calling from where? From DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Okay, Congolese. Okay, my brother. Go ahead. All right, so um, my question goes to Madam Bridget. Oh. Uh, have madam bridget um, have you tried to sit one-on-one -on -one with uh, dr neri to find out uh what is her problem have you invited her in omada's meeting to hear her out because why i ask this question is this for the very first time uh, she started um, attacking um, um, the authority DOS. I think there is a question that uh, Chike doesn't didn't answer very well. Or oh, for um, from my own point of view, he made a mistake by saying um, that he doesn't have right to expel anybody from IPOB. But not so long. Where we started seeing him expelling some people. So I think there's a mistake that uh, the um, Mazichike Dozem did that raised all this dust in the IPOB today. <coughs> to avoid to avoid such a thing in Omada or from women's wing, because uh, the way I'm seeing this problem spiritually we bring a lot of problems in women's wing. So um, I don't know if you have invited her sit one-on-one -on -one with the leaders of women's wing to hear her out and investigate because there is something in life. When, when uh, an allegation is being thrown out, what you have to do is to investigate this allegation. Is there, is there any element of truth to find out? Because now we are asking of the enemy within. As from my own point of view, it's very difficult to fish them out totally. Because they are just like us. They can pretend. Then the second thing I want to say is this. In this struggle now, now I understand the reason why the journey that's supposed to took the children of Israel 40 days took them 40 years. Because Israel right in those days they are stubborn like us now i think we need a meeting we, we need a meeting all the groups from within ipob that are now fighting um <laughs> both omada women's wing dr neri simon even with us if it's possible if we want to achieve what we are looking for very fast I think a meeting should be scheduled in a neutral ground, in a neutral country. Let everybody come. Let us know what is the problem. Because I begin to find out there is people who are feeling offended in IPOB. Maybe become Masunka and Ibo. Maybe there was something equal. Now what truth? And the investigation has not been done to find out the truth. And they are feeling pains. So I think uh a meeting is needed let everyone come and voice out the problem the anger now the leaders the men the wise ones we now look into all the whole weights all the whole contribution all the whole angers and know how to solve it so they are waiting for us they are waiting for our dance step so that they will know the angle to penetrate into us please i will plead for the leaders I will please for the leaders, let there be a meeting. We are splitting more and more. I never expected it from the women's wing to begin to ha have issues. And if this issue is not being handled very well, it will give us a lot of problem. Or go, or go, a very bad war. Madam Wakin war Ogimono. Once the family is not in unity, 
it will be very difficult to win our enemy. Mm. Please, I'm pleading. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you very much. Uh, let, let me go to um, um, or Ewood, Rabba, uh, okay, sir, but Rabba, <laughs> Rabba. <laughs> that name is biblical, is spiritual, uh, means a lot. Thank you so um, much. I'm so yes, sorry for messing Religious, up. yes. Uh, that name is pronounced Ehud. Ehud. Rabba, Ehud. Ehud. Rabba, Rabba. Rabba, Rabba. Oh, yes. Ehud. Ehud. If, Rabba, if you Rabba. read about Ehud, type Ehud, Google Ehud in the Bible, you will okay. know what he did. Yes, sir. I will try. You will know the deed of Ehud. Of Ehud. Okay, sir. Yes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome. You see, actually, it looks like I, I'm smiling, but I'm not smiling. Thank you. Because the reason why we are a people at war, and a good soldier smiles only on a payday. <laughs> uh, my payday is Biafra. Yes, sir. So I will only smile when Biafra is declared, and I'm mm -hmm. going home from across the Jordan. Um, in every struggle, there's always um, a heartbeat of that struggle. There's always something that gives value extraordinary mm -hmm. to that struggle. Mm -hmm. If you remove that very object mm -hmm. you will be subjected in subjection to the subject of fighting amiss mm. Mm -hmm. okay mm. here's the deal i want to thank everybody here today especially madam bridget i commend your pen uh, for should i say i'm gonna be a little bit uh, derogatory here for leading this uh, group of rebel men. That's uncontrollable. And other, we are very uncontrollable. We don't have what it takes to lead, especially, I mean, politically, even religiously, especially in a, a state of upheaval that we have uh, found ourselves in, in a, a crisis like this. Mm -hmm. We are a people at war, it is not being called war because we are not fighting back. The day we start fighting back, it will be officially announced as war. The, 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 the zoo soldiers, the Fulani Janjaweed military, they are in our area gallivanting around like monkeys high on banana and they are not being challenged. They kill, they ravage, they subdue, they dehumanize, they brutalize. You know, just like a scenario where you give a monkey AK-47, if you know what that monkey will do, the monkey will be listening to the sound of that AK-47. They will like it. That is the same thing. AK-47 in the hands of Fulani is like AK-47 in the hands of monkeys. And they are killing. They love it. They are killing us, smiling. They are flexing their muzzle. They are military, but they are not military. By all standards of military, they are not. Okay, now, this is my question. Madam Bridget, uh, you are the women leader. Now, what's all this? Fundraising, 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 all in the name of ESN. And ESN, as it stands out, is in shambles. Is not organized, doesn't have a commander, doesn't have leader, don't have future. And like I said, the heartbeat of this struggle should be the military. Like uh, you heard about a ANC. It was not the speeches of um, um, Mandela that was hitting the white people, the apartheid system hard. It was the military wing of ANC. If you go to a Palestinian liberation organization headed by Yasser Arafat, 
It was not. Yes, Arafat stopped us. He's a stammerer. It's not all his speech that was moving the thing. It was the efforts of Hezbollah and the military wing. And when the Israel, Israelis were in Europe, seeing what happened to them, the Holocaust, and still they had no future, they gathered together, say, we're going to go home. I guess they recited uh, Psalm 37, I believe so. By the rivers of Babylon, the way sat down, and then we weep when we remember Zion. The wicked men who carried us away to captivity required from us a song. But how can we sing the love song in a strange land? So now, we have not crossed over. We are singing the lost song in strange land. And then when they gathered together, they reinforced. The whole world came, the Islamic world came against them. So they picked up arms. So we cannot say we are fighting, freedom fighting. Every day we are on the internet, uh, social media, ranting, talking, and nobody. The soldiers, who takes care of them? What is their welfare like? And all that. How about materials? To, like Nande Kano came here, addressed the World Igbo Congress. They made jest of him and all that. But that's by the way. Who is leading in the front lines? Mm. Can we have at least one of the commanders, if things are what we are being presented to, if they are what we are being presented as, can we have one of the commanders address us? one day, so that we know how far they have gone as per defense. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Madam Okafo, you have seven questions in front of you. <clears throat> Can we stop there and let you, there's so, there's so many hands that are up. So would you like to begin to uh, answer the first question from Ndidi Amaka, the second question? From Uche Mbakwe. From the third question, Julie, Julie and Dr. Felix and Dr. Dano Martin, uh, and from Congo. Um, and then the um, the last question. You have quite uh, a list. Go ahead, madam. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Um, and please, I know it's a lot of questions now in case if um, I'm not able to get what you asked correctly, please, you can repeat yourself. However, I am a woman leader. I am, by extension, Biafran women are under me, those who want to be. Now, <clears throat> about the legal team that Ndidi Amaka asked, please pardon me, it's not everything that I will say here in the open. As for hiring and making sure that we have good representation for Onyendu, we have extensively done that. Unfortunately, it's painful. We are being deceived. You see this situation whereby we only depend on somebody going in and talking to Onyendu and come out and say to us, this is what Onyendu said. And then we have the leg. I'm not saying that anybody is lying. That's one thing. <clears throat> and then we have the legal team that we trust so much all along. And we are hoping that they are doing everything that they're supposed to do. All of a sudden, 
Munam. Where I get the wrong one, Ebre. How do you think when somebody will come out and boast that not only prevents the man that, let me tell you, is not boasting? If Bruce Fenn has been able to get into that court, we will not be where we are today. And it's hard to believe that we are the one that is preventing it. When I tell you how hard the group who are beyond, behind Bruce Fenn has worked, you will not believe it. There are men crying every night. And these men are not IPOB oath takers. They have sworn to do all it takes to make sure that Onyendu is released. But for we, the Biafrans, preventing that from happening is very heartbreaking. But you know what happened? The truth is coming out, and we are doing all the best we can. Oh, wonderful, Aniji, I knew it's not the full Anis. But we are praying that now Chukwu Kikabia Mainefe can soften the mind of this devilish group of people so that a change can be made because somebody is suffering. Somebody is suffering all that mess. Mm. So that's my answer for you, Ndidi Amaka. I don't know if um, I um, did justice to your question. Thank you. <clears throat> Then the next one that I have here is um, Mazu Chembakwe, right? Your basic question is if um, there is any, what is the position of um, the women right now? And if there is anything that um, we are doing in terms of um, agitation um, regarding onion dues, um Court case, right? Yes, and the sit at home. And sit at home. All right. You know that um, after now, I want everybody here, if you can take this message home. All the achievements that the IPOB women and the Biafran women has made is being attributed to Umada, Umada, Umada. Stop it. I'm not taking any credit, but sometimes it causes confusion because um, uh, something happened along the way. After we went to UK, the UK organization wasn't Omada. The UK organization was Biafran women. We mobilized all Biafran women, and we went to UK. You see, what we have in this world is this. There are people who want to be noticed. There are people who want their name out. And we, can, we saw it play, play out with Onyendu. Look at all the work that Onyendu is doing. But there are so many functions here and there that are claiming that they are working for Biafra agitation, but they are not doing anything, right? But the person who is doing something, yes, his name is out there. But again, why are all these people coming to cause all this distraction, claiming what they are not doing? It's causing a lot of confusion. When we came out from law, I have to say this, I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but it has to be said so that we know the truth, where all this problem is coming from. And um, Dr. Donald, this will also help to answer your question. If he did not, then I can explain further. 
Just like I said, um, I did not want to mention names or anything, but with all these questions coming up, I have no choice. I have to. Thank you. My actual purpose of coming out today is we tried the best we can to stop all this fight. When Onion Do was rendition, my first instinct after two days was let's focus on bringing Onion Do out, please. I came out to the radio, I announced it when there was this problem of accounts fundraising and all that, I said, oh, no. And they were calling me, people were calling me. And I came out to the radio. I said, please, our focus now is how to bring Onyendu out. Let's not talk about all this. For me, it was very, very irritating. But along the way, I was misunderstood that I'm trying to be against fundraising. However, that's by the way. So when we came back from UK, even before we went, if I can put it this way, when Onion Do was renditioned, you know, for the men, you cannot compare yourself with the women. The women were grossly affected. And as you know, it took a while before we can get the information that we wanted. Me, for one, I would not lie, I did not know what happened. Everybody was seeking to find out what happened, how can this happen, why did this happen, but we were not, nobody was getting information anywhere. Then a voice came up, Nelly came up with information. Unfortunately, you know, our people are hungry with information. Everybody dumbled on it because it looked true. The women grabbed it so hard. But in Bridget Okafu, I was very skeptical. But because of the fact that we have nowhere else, everybody was. Like, <laughs> what is really going on? And this is the only voice that is telling us what is going on. We have no choice but to say, okay, is that true? How did it happen? That was how and why we reached out to the DOS to ask them. We haven't heard from you. This is what we are hearing. Can you find out, is this true? Again, that um, interview was IPOB women in USA. Again, if I can explain, that, that interview was not meant to go out on air. Even though people may not believe me, that interview was meant to be on a Zoom meeting. But unfortunately, Chike Dozian called me on the phone. And you know, we have time difference with them. them. And he said to me, it's midnight, I cannot. I said, oh, because I was dragging the women, I was telling them we were out that day to broadcast about our leader. And if I'm not mistaken, there was a guy from Turkey that was criticizing the women, so we were out. That was the second time I'm going out to broadcast with the women. And if I can also add this to that, I told Chiwe, actually our sister, I commend her for her platform. I told her, before the women we go out to broadcast, I need you to send me the topics we are going to discuss and I have to look through it approve of it before we go out. And it was only those two occasions that he sent me those top, those um, um, whatever will be discussed. After that, I never had anything anymore. The second time that she sent it to me, she wasn't happy the way I changed it because 
whoever was pushing the agenda at the back will not like the idea. And I said to her, as long as I will be in this program, this is what we are going to discuss. So what they were doing was they decided to sideline me with the um, broadcasts and whatever they are broadcasting then. is from there that we have this creation of Omada. That is how Omada started. Going on that platform without my knowledge. This is the first time I'm saying it. That is how it gradually and gradually and gradually created a, a demarcation among us. Mm. Again, because of who was pushing the agenda. I, even though I did not know that it will go this bad, but I figured that something, something is going to go wrong. Mm. And that was why I said to Chimo, before you guys will go out there, I need the copy of what you are going to discuss. I said, we have so many things to talk about, not other things that I'm hearing that is going on. Mm -hmm. But you see, in this life, we are all adults. And the onion do made it clear. Amen. And, uh, you know, if somebody get up in, in, in her house and decide to do anything, Bridget Okafo, I have no control about it. And again, if I can put this out there, the women I led when Onyendu was here did not include Nelly, did not include Oyibo. Mm. If I should make that distinction. Nelly was not in our group. Oyibo was not in our group. But after we came back from London, there were some women who had, who has attached themselves so much to Nelly. And Nelly gave them their position. But you see, I can, just like I said, we are all adults. Mm -hmm. I cannot stop you from getting position that you want to take. And again, Onion do have said it. So that is how it started. All of a sudden, I, I don't want to waste anybody's time. All of a sudden, We all know, because when we, when we are still as if we are together, okay, let me tell you another thing that I'm missing. Even though I was skeptical, but because of Onyindu, because of Onyindu, I allowed, I, I kind of eased off so that we all can come together and work as one. That was why I allowed for us to come together as one. Unfortunately, I was proved wrong by the same Nelly because I thought that we were together until there was this accusation that from Master Prophet that Nelly um, hired Bruce and we also what. Nelly, Nelly did. I was scared. I was confused. It was very, very embarrassing to me. And I called the women. I said, I thought that we were working as one, trying to get things done. Why is all this coming true? Doesn't Nelly know who hired Bruce? Doesn't Nelly know that it was the women that hired Bruce? Mm -hmm. And you thought that it was a joke. It increased further. And before you know it, it was already in the social media. Mm. And my name was there for nothing sake. That was when I pulled myself out completely and said, okay, I don't think that um, I can continue with this. I told the two women, 
that we are so much interested and have engulfed themselves on Nelly. I said, you can go ahead with Nelly. Let me go ahead with the people that wants me to be their leader. Mm. So that became the, the situation the women were. We as Biafran women, we are still intact. We are still working together, doing what we're supposed to do. Because what we chose to do at this time is anything that we bring Onyendo out. No addition, no subtraction to it. Then coming to your question about um, sit at home. You know, after the, again, after the, the London trip, even before the London trip, we have a pastor, Pastor Maxwell, who is our spiritual leader. We were having a meeting, a prayer meeting with um, him all the time during the, um, before we went to UK and even after we went, we came back, we continued even. So I'm encouraging every woman who is not joining us, please join us every Saturday. We are still having the prayer. So um, sometime in, um, this is January, right? Sometime in December, we had it as a revolution, even though it's a revolution, but it's something important to do about rally and sitting at home as part of something that we have to do in order to help Onyendu and help to release Onyendu. He mm -hmm. saying that it has to be done for three months. I did ask him the question, okay, we here in diaspora, we are going to do the rally. Do we have anybody back home who can organize the seat at home and make sure that it happens? He said, yes, that um, is going to be a self-motivated, kind of a self-motivated action mm. that is going to come up gradually. And he is working on it. And thank God, and the, and the rally, we are also preparing for the rally. Some countries are going to do the demonstration and rally on the 18th, 19th, 20th, like New York and um, UK. Mm -hmm. um, whereas we here in the United States, we are preparing a, a rally in New York on the 23rd, 24th, and 25th because of the permit that is involved, it takes about 21 days before they can give us a permit for us to do that. But throughout the month of January, that will be rally and um, sit at home going on, I say, organized by the women. So, Mazimbako, I don't know if um, I answered your question. Julie. Oh, no, man, Zimbabwe is not going to answer. Just go right oh, ahead. Oh, okay. All right, so go ahead. Yeah, Next Julie. One is um, Donald, if I will answer you. You said I was, um, I may not, I may not do your, your, answer, your question the justice that you can, but that's the much I can say. I'm sorry if it is not up to the standard you are expecting. Donald, I heard you say I was in the radio praising Nelly. I never praised Nelly. What I said was Nelly is a self, an independent um, employee of IPOB. She works at an asset recovery staff of IPOB. And I further said that um, people who, who are in, people who has that as a profession or what they do are usually very aggressive. Yes, they are very aggressive people. It's just like <laughs> the IRS um, group, right? So, you know, because when they need information from you, they want that information regardless, whether you like it or not. That's their nature. That was what I said. 
and you cannot hold me accountable for what they do. Onyendu hired her. I did not hire her. So you, you cannot attribute what she is doing or blame me for what she is for, for what she did. That's her nature. I can't change it. If she gets up in the morning in her house where she lives and decide to send something out in the social media, by the time I get up in the morning, it's already in the social media. I have no control about it. So um, there is another question that you attach to it. What was it again? Uh, Donald just uh, meant, um, go ahead. No, no, you had something? No. No, the, um, that was it. That was pretty much it. That, that we, was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Congo. We're going to Congo. Congo. Um, Christopher, yes. First question again. Uh, uh, it was again due, on... Due and, process, right? Due process. Yes, yes, due yes. process, okay. What is a problem? Any element okay. of truth? If... Uh, um, if I should have a choice, and if and I think it's, it's something necessary, but still, we still all of us have to come together to agree on this, and I think that is going to help a lot for us. And we have already started planning it. We started planning it a little bit, and then all this commotion came, the distraction came, and we dropped. Somebody, a lawyer, one of the women brought it, suggested it, if we can form like this um, group of panels to look into problem in IPOB and see what we can do when somebody is accused of something or when there is a problem, we see how we can come together and resolve it. I know you will not like to hear what I have to say but I have to say it. You can call me Sabutua, that's fine. We understand DOS have made a lot of mistakes, but again, there are certain issues that we still have to go back to them, whether we like it or not, because Onyandu just suddenly left us, um, um, was renditioned, taken away from us, most of the things that we are supposed to have, if we have to do anything, is not with us. It's still with the DOS. They are still the people holding some information. So we still have to go back to them. So for if we have to form this panel, we still have to make sure that they are included in the panel. They have to be part of it. We can't leave them alone from the panel. Then who are we forming the panel for? Against them? Not me. Because nobody even knows the stand onion do we take when he comes out. I have to tell you that. Nobody knows. Look at all the problem that is lined up for him to solve. He is just one person. Let me tell you one thing. You see in this America, this America has already been divided a long time before onion do was rendition. We have not been working together. The four, the four um, regions, the, the four regional coordinators have not been working together as one. They have been a, a division. But the women, we have always stood alone. Not entangled with any of them. Do not bother ourselves with what they are doing. They have been fighting each other. And on in March, sometime towards the middle of March, I called Onyendu and I reported them. I told Onyendu, look at what is going on in America. America is divided. And the, the division is not something that we waste our time now to start talking about. The division has been there. And I told Onyendu, this is what is going on. But you see, they deceive Onyendu a lot. They trick him a lot. When they come to the meeting, they act and pretend as if they are together. And there is nothing for him to work, work with, to, to believe that they are not together. But we have never been together. We have been fighting. And they have always tried to pull the women on one side. I said, no, you are not pulling us to any side. We are staying by ourselves. 
So, but the unfortunate thing that happened, DOS, I have to say this, when DOS came, instead of trying to bring us together, and I have told Chick we do Zim this, instead of trying to be, bring us together, he went one side and was working with one side and the other side was sidelined. That is the cause of the problem in America. So I have told Chike Dozim, and the people who are giving him advice are the wrong people. He doesn't live in America. He's getting information from the wrong people. I told him that time without number, we cannot correct mistakes by making more mistakes. But you see, he's a human being. He is a human being. There is limits to what I can do. So forming that panel still means going back to him and then saying, okay, we understand we have gone astray, things has gone bad, but we want to include certain people. We want to bring you, you come in and we bring certain people and we come together so that if there is any problem in IPOB, it's not going to be one-sided anymore. Everybody will bring their idea and we see how to resolve it. If you ask me, that's the right thing to do at this point because we don't trust each other anymore. Again, I don't know if I answered your question. Who was that that asked that question? Did I answer your question? All this that we are saying, my dear sister, I'm not saying it that I, I just want to say something or I'm getting over anybody. Why I'm saying this is for our betterment because if people have listened to me, to the women, we had secret meeting with them. We discussed this at length, mm -hmm. but due to arrogance, ego, pride, jealousy, mm. it, they did not want to listen. Mm. Look at where it keeps us together. If Onyendu, I keep saying it, if Onyendu is to pull the curtain away in DSS and look at us, how do you think he will feel? We have really disappointed him. Hmm. It's a shame. It's embarrassing. It's a shamble. It's a joke. And you know the worst part of it? It's coming from us who live in diaspora. Hmm. Who should know better? Who, because of the good government of America, Italy, everywhere that we live, should, must have had some knowledge how things are being done right mm -hmm. and use that knowledge to help our people. But instead, look at where we ended. It's a shame. My only anger about it is somebody is suffering from all that mess we are going through and that is why I am here today. Uh, Madam Bridget, I know you have one more question, the fundraising ESC. Oh, and okay. Class. <laughs> the fundraising that me and the women that I lead have ever had about ESN is in March 2nd, 2021. Mm. All the other fundraising about ESN that you are seeing is not organized by me and the women that I lead. Mm. So I have no idea of what is going on. All I know is that there are people who, and, and, and it's very painful. After the last fundraising that we did in March 2nd, and if, if I can say this, I think I need to say it because the conflict with the women again had something to do with, oh, oh I am going to do the fundraising for ESN. I'm not going to do the fundraising for, 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 for the legal team. Let me tell you something. Nobody in the whole wide world. I'm not boasting. No group in the whole wide world have raised the amount of money 
Bridget Okafor and her group have raised for ESN? Nobody. The first fundraising we, raised, we did, by then, other people have done fundraising. And up to today, there is no account made about that fundraising. Hmm. Then we, st we stood up and then we did fundraising on February 19th. We raised $80,000. And one of our um, brothers supported us with $100,000. That was a total of $180,000. Mm. That we are all transferred to ESN account. Then it was the national account, but we use it for the ESN. Then we turn around. And we did. Those who have seen our report knows that we have track record of proficiency, accountability, you name it. Everything that is, we as we are whiter than just like Onion said when it comes to showing what we did in fundraising. We have panels that check and balance every spreadsheet every name that donated, every name that pledged and did not donate. We are so transparent, as transparent as you can think, as, as you never seen before in your life, if you see our spreadsheet. Every penny that we, 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 we raise is accounted for with the group of women that work with me for the fundraising. So we did that first one in February 19th, and we raised 180,000. All of that money, including our dues and levy and everything was sent to the national account, which was where the ESN, um, uh, the same thing as the ESN account. Then we turned around after two weeks, we did another fundraising in March 2nd, and we raised 66, $63,000. Onyendu instructed me to send 30 in Germany and 30 in the ESN account. Mm. After that, myself and the group of women that we led, we have never raised any fund again for ESN. We mm. have private people, like we have group from, from um, Israel that gather together, raise funds for ESN, and then when they call me, um, I direct them when they submit their money. I told the treasurer, I, I will tell the treasurer, look at the people who are going to um, transfer their money. I need a proof that the mo their money is there. I have so many people that I have directed to the, um, what do you call it? the websites that I monitor. Like they may call me and say, I want to give this amount of money. And then I, I guide them through and they transfer their money. But as for me coming out to raise funds for ESN, the last time was March 2nd. So you may have to take that question to the treasurer. They are the one that is raising fund now for ESN. Okay, thank you so much. That was very informative. Um, as they would say in some circles, loaded. Loaded information. You did extremely well, madam. I really appreciate it. Um, and there was a few other people. Dr. Felix can go ahead and one minute. <laughs> yeah, Marjorie, uh, Bridget, uh, thank you. We know each other. You know, I, I do struggle. My question is straightforward based on what you have said and what the guy from Congo asked. Given what IPOB is now as we speak, do you think that this IPOB will lead us to anywhere, anybody in DOS? Because I have, for historical purposes, historical purposes, I stand to be quoted that DOS put on you where he is by their action and their inaction, because their first duty for a head of state is his safety. I didn't say they took money or they did anything, but by their action and the inaction, what they did and what they didn't do, given the number one description of their job, they allowed it to happen. Do you think that these people should be trusted 
to lead us forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Madam, um, Madam Ogapa, do you would, would you like to answer the last question? Um, oh. uh, when you say thank you for that question, but um, the way I will answer that question is, Um, again, I may not please everybody, but I will say this. If we start dwelling on right now with the way things are, somebody is suffering. If we start dwelling on who did what and who did not do what, when you do we stay there forever? I will appeal to everybody, please. Ever let, let it be our first priority to bring Onyendu out. When Onyendu comes out, you know what happened? It's no longer in those days when people call him secretly and tell him about things, and then he doesn't have enough time to go through it, and then decision will be made. No. Everybody, I think that this time, all of us, we have to stand up. Everybody will have the right to air their view. This is my own opinion, because a lot of mess has been made. But if we keep on going back to those mess, Onyendu will not come out. Mm. I, will, I will appeal to everybody, let's focus on bringing Onyendu out. When he comes out, after he rests, we all will have the opportunity to air our view, make complaints, and he will listen. Thank you so much. For me, when I tell you what I went through, you will not believe it. But mm. I am still pushing forward for him to come out. Let him come out. Well, we may have a... a out, then we go with that. Ndidi Amaka, the producer would like to hear from you again. So please, give us your last version, last word. Unmute yourself and come on in. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, um, Gala men behind the camera. And uh, thank you, woman leader. You have exhibited uh, your vast knowledge and the uh, wisdom in answering all the questions asked. The word is enough for the wise. But my people said, so onya onya you know yourself you know what to do do it she said we she said that somebody is suffering there and that is somebody's son that is somebody's husband that is somebody's um father and that is Biafran's leader let's bury the hatches Mm. A lot of things have gone down the drain, but to A is human and to forgive is divine. Mm. There are lots of negative allegations that have no basis, no roots. People talk about, you know, about people just to make sure they dent their integrity and their images. But let's bury the hatchet. Without us, without this forgiveness, and without this reconciliation, the journey will be far. So even among the mothers, I, I understand what Madam uh, Bridget said. I am a normal mother, and I'm also in her cabinet in her, in, uh, as a Biafra woman. But like I said, in this capacity today, I am here as a mother. I know the challenges she faces. I, I know the oppositions. I know everything she said, including when she tried to unite everybody when we came back from London. Then there are people who are incorrigible. <clears throat> this one, they say, bring your friends close. They bring your enemies closer. There are some enemies you need to give long spoon. You don't need to bring them closer. But the more you, the, the more you nice you are to them, the more they split their, you know, ulterior motives and their hidden agendas. And if you find out that it's not going to help us 
Mazin Nam Dekalu said, we don't treat cancer, we cut it off. We amputate it and, and, and the body regenerates and if it doesn't, it grows as a storm. And we move on. But please, woman leader, like right now, a lot you know, falls in your hand. I know you have gone through that pain before, you have gone through that betrayal, you've gone through that, uh, you know, humiliation here and there. But that is what a leader gets. A leader absorbs a lot. A leader has a, a big shock absorber. Including myself too, including everybody, no matter, including the women in Biafra. We got to, you know, ignore because all this is we said today, by the time we go back in the morning tomorrow, Nelly will be flying and other things in there. Please, let's ignore her. She is a distraction. Mm. So please, Biafra and Umada, we still have it there. We might be Umada, but we are still Biafra women. Some of us, are, we, are, we are still Biafra women. And we have our leader, my, Mrs. Bridget Okap, as the Biafra women leader. Umada, in as much as we have our you know, right, God giving right. That is what we're exercising because we don't want IPOP law and and the and the rule to impose themselves on us. But we are still Umad Umwani Biafra, led by Miss Bridget. We're gonna work with you. We if you, if you don't mind when we settle this air that is this dust that is flying everywhere, we're gonna invite you. We got to start this reconciliation and healing. And that is the only way, even if our leader comes out tomorrow, we can't still build the kind of nation we have with this kind of mindset. We must learn. We cannot be in, in the Western world and still be having the you know, method of a, a zoo thinking. We are, we are liberal and we should show it in everything we do. So no. please, my beloved uh, sisters and the uh, mothers and the uh, great beer friends, we don't need 70 million people to rescue the nation. We only need 100 men. And the court, uh, I start to be corrected, Ma Zimbabwe and the uh, Chief Obidike. In the military, both men and women are addressed as sir. We are all misters. So when Ma Zimbabwe, when Ma Zimbabwe said he needed 100 men, that includes women as well. Madam Bridget, you're one of those 100 women, 100 men. Please. Thank you. <laughs> and so I've set us, set us what we invite you because we will invite you. We need <laughs> to you. get on the job. We need to get things done. Please. And you thank you work. again for the opportunity, sir. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, man, if I may, I may just say, no, I can't in a jury, you have been in it. So, Okay, well, is you know for one more person. Uh, if, if if she had that question or even a comment, we'll we'll accept it. You know, come on. Uh come on in and say something to us. Greetings to you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Greetings. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm grateful, and uh, it's what I've prayed for. I I expected such a situation, but I didn't know how to uh, come about it. Mm -hmm. um, my name in full is Evangeline Ngozi Omini. Mm -hmm. um, I'm coming in just to, first of all, I want to thank Madam Bridget because she has really done a good work. And uh, that is why I contacted her. She mentioned my name, or she didn't mention my name. She just referred to me. Uh, I'm Barista Ngozi Omini. Mm -hmm. I was the one she was talking about that I made a suggestion mm -hmm. on how to you know, put things together and resolve conflicts. So uh, that is why I'm coming in. I'm, I'm not so gifted orally. I prefer to write. Um, but I need to clarify some issues here. First of all, 
when I I joined the this this forum, which is being led by Madam Bridget, mm -hmm. I noticed that there were a lot of conflicts, a lot of problems, a lot of uh, you know. It it was it's, I, I just noticed something like idiocracy, you know, in in in, in Biafra as a whole. In the bay, in the Kuku, see, um, I'm a head to see, I come out of the water, Abi. Wait, do I see you here? So I was right. saying, for our house to be in order, mm -hmm. the first thing I made a suggestion. It was a suggestion. The first thing is to unite. And before I before I said this. I had already the, the the something I want to clarify here is that um I had already written to IPOB house, the family where I belong to. Mm -hmm. I am an experienced person, not even I wouldn't even say lawyer. I would say I'm a mother. Mm -hmm. I'm a mother and a grandmother. And I know how uh, when there is a problem in the house. The, nothing moves. So the first thing to do is to bring everybody together. Unite. So unite. So so what I did was in my family here in Dublin, that is the IPOB family, I wrote them. And I said, there is so much bickering and rancor. We can't continue with this. And apart from writing the, the coordinator here, I wrote IPOB. That is headed by Chike Doziem. I wrote him. I don't know. I was told that it, by then our Onyendu was still there. He, he had not been captured. He had not been released. Mm -hmm. So I, when I wrote this, I was expecting an answer. I said, it is good for us to form a, a panel of uh, conflict resolution. Uh, lawyers or any and any experienced person, even you veteran can be part of us. You know, experienced people who can come together to put a house in order. So I wrote these letters to I I if they will tell the truth, I wrote to um the the coordinator in Dublin and um they told me what I was what, what I was told was that it had been discussed with Onyendu that they were on it, that DOS was on it. So when I joined uh, the this group led by Mrs. Uh, Bridget, I wrote uh, because I'm very good at writing. I, that is, I write a lot. Maybe it's my writing that brought confusion. I wrote a lot of things. That's my own gift. If you tell me to write books in one week, I will. I've written so many books. I wrote about the self-determination on how we are going to get Biafra. I, so I wrote a lot of things suggesting what we are going to do to resolve all this that is going on because I had already seen that this was tearing up or is going to tear our house apart. So the, the clarification I want to make here is that Madam, um, Madam Bridget, I'm telling you now that I, 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 maybe you didn't know because I know you are busy and you have a lot of things to tackle. I had already written the DOS because I believe that there are the, the structure created by Mazin Mandekan, our leader. I, it is even in my book. If you Google my name, Evangeline Ngozio Mini, my book is there, up there, where I wrote on self-determination, Biafra self-determination. I put down all these that we have to do this to prevent, prevention is better than cure. To prevent all these things, we have to be united. I foresaw these. That's Thank what's you. going on here. Thank you so much. There is quite a bit of information that we... I wish it that you have called in earlier so that we can uh, give you the extended amount of time that you need to tell us about your self-determination process. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Evangeline and Ngozi Chubu. Uh, Dublin, all the way from Dublin. Well, um, I think we've come to the point where we have really 
extended our time. But well, that is because of the character and the caliber of the of the guests that we have today, um, Madam Bridget. We are really so proud and very thankful of you so for all that you have done and all that you have said. Uh, thank you for answering the questions that was asked about you, asked of you, the best that you can. Uh, we need tolerance in order to continue the effort to rebuild uh, the African nation. We need to recognize all the African Defense Forces, the African National League, Royal Armed Forces, the African National Guard, and the ESCN. And we ask everybody to please, with the Namdi Kano's case coming just a few days from now, we ask you to please remain as calm as you possibly can. The issue that I started with on corruption cannot take place in Biafra. So Biafra as a nation, we will defeat corruption, no matter how difficult. Those of us who will be involved in eradicating corruption in our renewed nation will know we will be in an internal war. We already know that. So corruption can only be prevented when we, the Africans, have enough and decided to do something about it. The Afro needs only to rise up a new generation of corrupt, free young people and us together and in support of one another. Madam Bridget, you have said many things that were so good, so very cor correct. And um, thank you all so much. God bless all of you. Uh, hopefully the next time, if we, uh, next week, we'll be uh, broadcasting again. Biafra will survive. We have a matter on our hand. As grown-ups, we need to keep an eye on what's going on. May God give blessing to those who are now our lawyers who, who are handling this case to get our brother, our Namdi Kano, a father, a husband, a leader, to bring him out. But let us be cognizant of the other side. As soldiers and from a military perspective, we must be vigilant and keep an eye on them all the time. I would like to say one thing, please, Chufo do OBDK, if you don't mind. I won't take too much time. I can't stop you. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so no, no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Go ahead, um, I, I did not want to mix it up with um, the question, the answers that I was given. I just want to make some disclaimer, please. Yes. The first one is, please, if you are out there anywhere and they told you that women leader did this or did that, please ask the name of the women leader. Mm. I have people who are parambulating themselves as women, woman leader without adding their name. That's impersonation. So, and I'm not saying that my name is woman leader, but as you all know, once you say woman leader without mentioning a name, they will think that it is me. So please, if you had that women leader said something or women leader did this, please ask the person what's the name of the woman leader. <laughs> because somebody is trying to be funny out there. Then another thing is I have received a lot of questions, both from men and from women, asking me, you were mentioned by our leader as um, one of the emissaries. 
And there have been stories and um, broadcasts that you abandoned the emissary job, that you betrayed our leader by abandoning the emissary job. <laughs> now, this is my response. Emissary job? Our leader made this broadcast almost two years ago. Are these other emissary, are, are they telling me that they are now starting? Their emissary job, they are very much behind. Mm. I have started my emissary job with the women I lead right immediately after our leader made the proclamation. Mm. Mm. I have been working as his emissary. Mm -hmm. So they are late. They cannot just make up a job description for themselves what they will do as emissaries, and then I set me to come and join them on that. No, because you know I know one thing, with the people pushing the agenda, number one, there will be a lot of distraction and I don't need it at this time. Mm. Secondly, I lead the women. Before I, because everywhere I go, the women follow me, right? I cannot shovel their name in one, in one program and then when we look and say, oh, my God, this is not good, I pull them out and say, okay, let's go this way. Mm -mm. I'm not going by myself. I'm going with a group of women. Mm. And before I dumble myself into anything, I want to make sure that is what will suit what our agenda is. Mm -hmm. I cannot just join any group or any, <laughs> whatever the name is, not me. So the people who are asking question about why are you with, with, with why are you not with the emissaries? I'm working, I'm doing my emissary job. It has commenced two years ago. I remember at one time when a group of people wanted to see our leader and I said to him, I, lead, I called him and I said, there is somebody that, there are a group of, you didn't need to talk to these people. Hello, what happened to Madam Bridget? Go ahead. Well, I don't know what happened. So, uh, you know, I sit here and, and I hear and I listen and I'm sure that the, the, the central context of what you're saying uh, has been on, uh, as you voice it, should be understood by everybody. So everybody, I suppose, wants to be my, um, uh, the woman leader. But those who know, know. Until the next time. Thank you all for coming. God bless you. God bless Biafra. God bless Namdekano. This is Abvet. American Biafran Veterans Radio TV in Washington, D.C. Our mission is simple. Our mission is to protect and to defend Biafra no matter what we have to do. Take care of each other. Protect, protect each other. Protect our family. Namdekano is the objective. Getting our nation Biafra is the mission. Don't forget. God bless you. This is Chief Obidike. Until the next time, we will see you next time.